How's it going? This is Derek Quick with Financial Fortune here to educate, elevate, and entertain, and hopefully make you a lot of money with this deep stock research. So Albert Einstein said that the only source of knowledge is experience. Well, I look to profit off of other people's experience, and I'm sure you do too. So how did John Borshoff's company, Paladin, do 104,000% stock gains in less than four years? How might you get in on the next 100,000% gain? And how will uranium stocks, which that's what did this 100,000% stock gain, start to rise in the coming months? And how did they do this in the past? And finally, how might John do it again with his new company, Deep Yellow? First, enrich that like button below and subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and I'm going to show you. So we're gonna jump right into this right now. So the answer is twofold. Uranium, supply and demand, and John Borshoff's management. I will get into exactly how John's management was key, as I have 10 important guidelines you can use for any analysis of a potential 100x stock. Many of these guidelines, John Borshoff and many other CEOs that have followed these guidelines have led their respective companies to 100x and even 1000x gains. Before I get to those guidelines, I will quickly explain the uranium market and how it has and will produce these life-altering gains in stocks as entertainingly and in as much layman terms as possible. 104,000% gains means that with Paladin, they did this in four years. So every $1,000 you invested in Paladin four years before this, you would profit over $1 million four years later. This is very rare, but it is possible in uranium stocks. Even a fraction of that percentage can produce bountiful gains. Now onto uranium. So there are roughly only 60 or so publicly traded uranium companies across the entire world now, including producers, which make up the least amount of the 60 or so. Uranium developers are next, which represent most of the 60 companies that are left. And finally, the mostly dormant non-exploring explorers. But no, there were over 400 of these companies during the last uranium bull market in 2000 to about 2011. Most of these companies are delisted now. So out of the 60, these are the companies that are publicly traded. So I have a list of around 50 publicly traded uranium companies that are left. And this list is in my Google Sheets with the current share price and information updated daily as well as links updated to the company's presentation and other great information that I put in there. So I update this daily, and if you want that, you can find it on my Discord. I have it in one of the channels there. So the nuclear power that the United States uses is around 20% of the base load power. So this means that at night, and even in a hurricane, it is still safely producing power without interruption. So this is a big deal. Nuclear power using uranium is around 50% of the US's total clean energy production. So now uranium goes through these long-term markets where the price declines and overproduction and demand weakens after these contracts are established. A little bit later, I'll talk about specifically what these contracts are. So uranium has these outrageous bull markets that cause these competent uranium companies to have these rags to riches gains like the stock we talked about earlier, Paladin, that was led by John Borshoff. As the cure for low prices is low prices, as Rick Roll has said, we have been in a 12 year or so bear market. So now is about the time that the stocks are starting to wake up. So after a while, Quickly, these companies raise enough money to get into production, either through private placements or stock offerings, like we've seen recently in a lot of the uranium companies, or preferably loans now that the price of uranium has started to rise, but it's still not at that level that these companies can get the best type of loans. So the company's goal is to get into production or mining to meet the utility's long-term contract demands. If they are lucky or if they have good management, they can start selling uranium and fulfill these contracts, and their valuations can go up overnight, causing the stock price to have extremely volatile gains. 
The last bull market started in the early 2000s with a few catalysts similar to today. In the early 2000s, a few of the largest mines closed because of flooding, along with increased demand coming on from China from the new reactor builds that they were building. Similar to today, this helped spark the rise in uranium as utility companies scrambled to fill these long-term contracts. The bull market ended roughly after 2007 in its downward fall in 2011 with the Fukushima incident, where Japan essentially stopped their nuclear energy production overnight and moved mostly to LNG, which is liquid natural gas for power. Until recently, Japan has begun restarting a lot of their reactors within the last month. So this is big news for uranium as this is one of the reasons the price decline has declined over the years so much. This crisis in 2011 could have been avoided if it weren't for their outdated nuclear plants with outdated faulty diesel water pumps. This is really what caused a lot of the issues. But it was a lesson that the world learned from. Now during the time of this overproduction that I've been talking about through the last decade, it causes the price of uranium to decline as we have seen. Utility companies buy enriched uranium fuel in long-term contracts as I spoke of earlier, usually a few years before they actually need it. This is typically only a few percentage of the utility company's budget and is based in terms lasting at the max usually around 10 years at a set price usually above what the market is trading it at. Currently it's in the $30 range and almost no new contracts can be renewed at this price, although many utility companies are a couple years away from exhausting their fuel. From uranium in the ground to enriched fuel in a reactor is a long process. This is why utility companies make these long-term contracts years in advance from actually needing it. They can store multiple years worth of fuel in a relatively small, safe area. There are around 94 US nuclear power plants and about 442 worldwide with 53 new reactors being built in China, India, and other countries currently. This is an increased demand that will only be met with a rise in long-term contract price in uranium. Lastly, the uranium market has a spot market where small amounts of uranium can be bought and sold. Think of it as the Craigslist of the uranium market. Recently, the biggest producer of uranium, Cameco, and Kazatomprom have been buying in the spot market as the recent events have shut down almost all production and mining worldwide. This is one of the many reasons the demand will soon rise as supply has been cut worldwide and demand continues to increase. It's safe to say that we have an opportunity for 100 baggers again, if and only if the companies follow many of the next 10 guidelines that I will soon go over. Mr. Borshoff of former Paladin and now Deep Yellow, when he did this 104,000% gain, he led the team that completed the drill out, feasibility studies, financing, construction, commissioning and safe operation of the first two conventional uranium mines built in the world for 20 years. He also oversaw numerous successful large public market transactions, including acquisitions and major capital raising, causing his previous company, Paladin, to do 104,000% gains. The next 10 guidelines are what you should look for in a 100 bagger stock, or in this case, a possible 1,000 bagger. Number one, capital allocation. How the CEO decides to spend the money. This is the single most important thing for picking a 100 bagger. The only way for a company to grow to this magnitude is if they reinvest their money into something that grows the company. A lot of stocks stay stagnant and the CEO and board are content with taking in millions of dollars in salaries. This type of company should be avoided if you are looking for a 100 bagger gains. Number two, the CEO and management with skin in the game. This essentially means that they have shares. Were they the founder? This is important because a lot of the stocks sometimes have management that don't have any skin in the game, so they really don't care about the price of the stock for shareholders. One thing I really do like about John is that he recently said that he plans to make good decisions to prepare for the upcoming uranium bull market so that shareholders can profit as the company will be able to meet production timelines within the next 18 months or so. 
The same thing can be said for a CEO or management or founder with too much skin in the game. This person only cares about pumping the stock. Nicola. That's all I have to say. But this type of pumping without results should be avoided in a company most of the time. Number three, acquisitions. This is when a company buys another company or asset like a mine or physical uranium for a low cost. It can help a company grow or even get them into another sector. In uranium, it's usually done to get another mine going to meet production demand or even to buy out a smaller competitor, which we have seen, which Paladin did do in the past. Number four, smart leverage managing debt. To get a uranium mine up and going, it can take multiple years and take a lot of money, so financing is important. There are drill outs to be done, feasibility studies, construction, commissioning, and they even have to continue safe operations. This all takes a lot of money and usually is done when the company takes on debt. So John was great at being able to manage debt and get two mines up and going, something nobody had done in 20 years at the time. They went from Explorer to a major producer fulfilling these long-term contracts. Number five, no dividend. So the company should instead reinvest large sums of money into something that will give them a better return and profit for shareholders more long-term. If the company has a dividend, then likely shareholders will not put the money back into the company. The more money a company makes, often CEOs like to issue dividends, but like I said, most of the hundred bagger stocks never issue dividends and those that failed to meet 100 bagger status usually issued dividends. Number six, stock buybacks. A stock buyback boosts the ROE, which is the return on equity. This is fine as long as there is sales growth in the company. In the last decade, many people looked down on companies that got bailouts and then used the money to do buybacks of the stock, then boosting the stock up. This gave buybacks a bad name but it is totally normal for this to happen as long as the company isn't getting government assistance. It actually helps the shareholders in the long run as it boosts the price and gives shareholders a bigger piece of the company while raising the return of equity. Number seven, minimizing taxes. This too can be looked down upon as most of the profitable companies pay little to no tax. But if a company can look for tax deductions for clean energy and other government tax breaks, this will help a company get to 100 bagger status. Number eight, decentralized organizations. This is good when you have a large board of directors that work as a good team but still have that checks and balances in set. Now John brought his team from Paladin, so they've been working for a while together and were very successful. His new company, Deep Yellow, has pretty much the same management. In the uranium industry, there are few teams that will be able to get into production in time one example to the decentralized organizations is to look at the creation of Star Wars. So George Lucas, during the first few Star Wars films, the good ones, had a team of people that kept him in check. They told him to change things and encouraged him, but fast forward 30 years later, nobody would tell George Lucas what to do. So we got episode one, we got Jar Jar Binks, and we even went back to digitalize a lot of the great scenes that we loved throughout the years. This actually made it worse. This was a big problem and most fans could agree on this. So the point I'd like to make is that it's good to have people that you know that can help you create your vision and that are focused to help you grow the company and increase the shareholders value. Number nine, cash flow focus. After all, the company should want to make money so you can make money. So this is very important. They need to focus on cash flow. And finally, number 10, getting into production, the costs, the location of the mines, and the company is a big part of how John was able to grow Paladin. His new company has a great location as well and a great mining jurisdiction. It's located in Africa and I believe that this will help this company possibly get to a 50 to 100 bagger in the future years. Most of the best traders in the world rarely took out cash when they have these long-term 100 bagger status. That's how they made so much money. This helped compound their profits and help when there was actually losses in the uranium market when they had bad quarters. One thing I'd like to say is multiple weeks ago, SPI Energy, you might have seen it, SPI, gained as much as 3,800% during the one trading day. And this is a NASDAQ stock. So the market can and will produce these massive gains in the coming uranium bull market. 
So I hope you enjoyed this basic uranium video. I'll go on into uranium a lot more in other videos. So what are your thoughts on uranium stocks? Are you thinking of investing? I want you to comment below if you can. Do you want to know more about uranium? And if you do, I have a link below to my private discord and we discuss uranium daily there. I have a lot of great information. I also have that stock sheet there with all the uranium companies on it that I update daily. It will come in handy in the coming months as uranium starts to wake up and all these gold companies change their names to uranium. You don't know which is which. Thank you so much for getting to the end of this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you have not already. I want you to have a wonderful day and remember that the next 100 bagger is out there and I am looking for it for you.